Okay, my name is Darren Joseph from HJ.tax. We're a team that seeks to demystify the sometimes confusing world of cross-border taxation. And today we have the honor and the privilege of joining us, Edward Gordon. Edward, can you please introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Edward Gordon. I own a company called Preservation Capital Partners. Uh, we've been doing tax structure work uh, for over 30 years, both for U.S. domestic and for non-U.S. Uh, families. Uh, and entrepreneurs, some actors, some athletes, but not a whole lot, mostly entrepreneurs and wealthy families. Fantastic. And today we're going to talk about an often misunderstood concept called PPLIs. If you could speak to some experiences that you may have had in dealing with other jurisdictions. So I know you mentioned Latin America. Do you Have you had any experience structuring uh, policies for clients who are exposed to Europe? Or no? Yeah, I mean, and Europe's tough. Not every country yeah. in Europe has the same rules. I mean, as I said, Spain is, is difficult. It's England, is, England is not that easy. England is not that easy. Okay, so could you talk about how it works with US, UK? Just generally speaking. You know, so we, we, we were going to do a policy with the UK taxpayer, mm -hmm. and we were going to have the policy deployed into US private equity. And it was just mm -hmm. a lot of questions as to whether the return on the private equity investments would be exempt from British taxes. Yeah. And we chose not uh, to do it. Right. Okay. So it didn't work. Is there any jurisdiction where it did work? Any in sure. Europe? I mean, I, I, oh, yeah. Switzerland uh, okay. is easy. Right. Like, like, mm -hmm. I mean, and, they, and they're the providers of a lot of these policies. So mm -hmm. Italy, Luxembourg, uh, Israel, we have a lot of Israeli taxpayers mm -hmm. who like investing in U.S. real estate. Mm -hmm. And the way they had been doing it before was they were coming in as debt, so they weren't subject to U.S. tax because if they bought U.S. real estate, they're subject to U.S. taxation. So we make yeah. those investments through the PPLI policy. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. on death, borrowing, or surrender, if the beneficiary is an Israeli beneficiary, it's going to be yeah. there's a twenty five percent tax on the gain. In, at the Israeli level, on the Israeli side, but, the US but it, work, it, it works for the US. Mm -hmm. yeah, but in that case, we've had clients that uh, were residents of the UAE, mm -hmm. and they, oh, there's they, nothing they, there. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing there. So we, we actually yeah. don't use a life policy there. There we use mm -hmm. a, in most cases use an annuity, mm -hmm. and because the, the annuity just does is it's the same product except it doesn't have the death benefit components so with one less fee, even though mm -hmm. it's de minimis. Right. Uh, um, and when they surrender the annuity, they don't pay taxes in the UAE. Yeah. Um, well, well, there are no taxes, generally speaking, in the UAE. But uh, I guess if they were, that's assuming that they're not exposed to any other jurisdiction. Because correct. if they were US exposed, then you're back where you started, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. again, every one of these countries is mm -hmm. case by case. We At one point, we did this for a number of Chinese na nationals. And mm -hmm. I think the last time we spoke, I think I told you that I kind of abandoned that a little bit because it, I found that it became far more difficult for Chinese nationals to actually get money out of China. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, the, yeah, so the money that was already out, the money that was already out was already mm -hmm. easy to work with. What about other parts of Asia, like Hong Kong or Japan or oh, Hong, no? Hong Kong? This is, this is huge in Hong Kong, yeah. Taiwan, Singapore. Yeah. Um, as I said, Australia, I haven't worked with other jurisdictions, but um, I'll give you, for instance, it works very well in Brazil. Okay. So let's talk about Brazil. Oh. Uh, huge country, country, right? Lots yeah, of wealthy people. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, I actually have a presentation in Portuguese yeah. someplace. Oh, wow. So from a Brazilian point of view, because obviously we know it works for the U.S., right? But from a Brazilian tax point of view, it works as well. Yeah. For, as we speak, yes. Do they, yeah. Can they change the yeah. rules? Yes. Yeah. I mean, certain mm -hmm. countries have changed the rules over time. I think I said that early Mexico years ago worked really well, and now there's you got to go through some hoops Mm -hmm. And you can't have a, a Mexican beneficiary. I mean, there's lots of, again, each country, when yeah. we go there and say, yeah. here's the situation, mm -hmm. I then pick up the phone, I'll call you, I'll call the guys over at Withers, I'll call the guys over at Baker and say, mm -hmm. and I'll call everybody and say, how would you do this? Yeah. And if I don't get a consensus on how to do it, mm -hmm. no, no, nobody wants to be made famous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's for sure. But let, let me yeah. give you one other aspect of yeah. PPLI. Yeah. Most policies are written in Switzerland, Luxembourg, mm -hmm. Cayman, Bermuda. It's just jurisdictions that, that make it more efficient to do these. From the reinsurance perspective, yeah. 
well, reinsurance or just cost. If you do a poly okay. PPLI in the US, mm -hmm. you have you might have state premium tax, you have some other oh, issues. I see. Um yeah. the if I was to own a PPLI company, let's say in the state in the states, mm -hmm. I might have to put up ten thousand or twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollars per policy in reserves, even mm -hmm. though I may not hold any risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I did this in, you know, uh one of the islands. Uh, maybe I just put up a letter of credit of $250,000 and I can write as much business as I want because 100% of the risk is mm -hmm. reinsured. Mm -hmm. Makes it more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, if you buy a policy in the U.S. or in a U.S. territory, mm -hmm. like Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. a non-U.S. person does not have to worry about common reporting standards, CRS. So the U.S. Does, currently does not report to somebody's home country about an account in the U.S. If that foreign person invested in a U.S. in, in a um, PPLI contract in Bermuda, mm -hmm. Bermuda or will Europe. report to the home country or Europe to that yeah. home country that this account exists. Mm -hmm. One that lends itself maybe to people that I don't want to do business with that are just purposely doing this to avoid CRS. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there is a real use for it because if you've been to, um, especially a lot of Central American countries, you don't want people to know how wealthy you are and you don't want your government mm -hmm. to know what accounts you have. And it's mm -hmm. more of a privacy issue and a security issue than it is mm -hmm. uh, trying to hide yeah. you know, bad money. Mm -hmm. But you know, you oh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of background checks that get done both uh, in my office, mm -hmm. the insurance company, and the reinsurer. Mm -hmm. before we get the green light to go ahead. Do you deal with PEPs of politically exposed persons? Generally speaking. Um, we have, but in, in just in the U.S. Not, I have not no, dealt with any. Not outside. Okay. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.